The supercar story starts here, the Lamborghini Miura. Now, before the Miura arrived, we had very fast cars, we had mid-engine cars, and we had voluptuously styled cars. But at the 1966 Geneva Motor Show, when Ferruccio Lamborghini pulled the wraps off this, he pulled all those elements together to create a car that we'd never seen before, a new kind of car, a supercar. Lamborghini actually showed a naked chassis of the car earlier at the Turin Motor Show in 65. And on the back of that alone, took 10 orders when Marcello Gandini from Bertoni styled it in this beautiful steel and aluminium coachwork, demand went through the roof. And it's not difficult to see why. It's quite easy to pick out the SV. At the front, its headlamps are shorn of its iconic eyelashes. It's got these big, fat 60-profile tyres at the back, covered with blistered rear wheel arches. But the biggest difference is the Bizzarini-designed V12 engine transversely mounted and four litres in capacity, it breathed through four downdraft Weber carbs and produced 385 horsepower. Now that was good enough for 175 miles an hour. That's quick today. Back in 1971, it was probably the fastest thing on the living planet. Economically, it's very interesting. Uh, the seating position is awful uh, if you're over five foot eight, but you have this beautiful bank of six Jaeger instruments the open gate for the five-speed manual box. But possibly the best thing is this tiny bit of Perspex, which is the only thing that separates you from that engine. It's a fully immersive experience driving this car. Lamborghini may not have had any motorsport experience to draw on, but they made their cars hard and fast to drive. You're overwhelmed by the sheer difference in weighting of the steering and the controls. The steering is light, once you're on the move and quite detailed in its feedback. Clutch is heavy, gearbox is recalcitrant. The brakes finally work when you press very, very hard and the throttle feels incredibly stiff. But when you really stamp on it, this thing moves and goes and sounds unlike any other modern supercar. So let's go back to 1971. We're back at the Geneva Motor Show. Lamborghini pulled the wraps off the SV. The ultimate Miura, the ultimate supercar. But at the same time, they pull the wraps off the Countach. A car so different with its brutal styling, geometric angles. It's the very antithesis of the Miura. Two very different cars, both from the same company. Two-seater cockpit, mid-engine V12, outrageous power, but it was the styling that really defined this car. This is 1971, remember. When the production Countach arrived in 74, it featured the Mura's V12 engine behind the gearbox, but this time it was longitudinally mounted and the car itself featured a brand new steel space frame chassis. The first models were, quite frankly, pretty ropey and pretty scary to drive. But by 1978, the LP400S had it nailed. It was lower, it was wider, and it sported a massive great big wing, which forced the car onto the ground and cured its wayward aerodynamics. In 1985, this baby arrived, the 5000 QV. Capacity was up to 5.2, and power was a heady 455 horsepower. Just like the Mura SV before it, the 5000 QV is the sweet spot in the Countach range. The aggressive geometric styling of the exterior is reflected here in the interior. You've got this shoebox of an instrument panel, a raft of square buttons thrown everywhere. The dashboard looks like it was designed with a set square. Look through the wing mirrors and all you can see are engine vents. And through the mirror here, there's just a massive cam cover for the engine. Like the Mura, driving the Countach is a very visceral experience. It demands effort and concentration into every input. It doesn't like being manhandled and you can't simply get in it and drive it like you can a modern supercar. This car demands effort, 
timing and precision. Focus on every steering input, every gear change, every time you touch the pedals, and you'll be rewarded with a truly scintillating drive. Within the space of five years, Lamborghini gave us the Mura and the Countach, two incredibly different cars, but together they forged the template for the modern day supercar. And without them, we wouldn't have today's Huracan or Aventador, nor would we have had Porsche's 959, the Ferrari F40, the McLaren F1, the McLaren P1, La Ferrari, the Bugatti Veyron, all the cars that we love. So thank you, Ferruccio Lamborghini, for turning your back on tractors and giving us these.